Doc. Today we're doing a quick tutorial on how I overclocked the Intel Core i5 Sandy Bridge processor. I've got the 2500K. You've seen me review this before in another system. I'll include the link here if you want the details for that. But today we're looking here on CPU-Z in Windows 7, the default values with it not overclocked. And I'm going to show you how I overclocked it to 4.7 gigahertz. So it's not about overclocking like crazy, but overclocking smart. Okay, because you don't want to um, kill your CPU in the long run and uh, overheat it basically. Okay, so starting off here, you can see that the temperatures on this 2500K Sandy Bridge CPU, the K stands for it being unlocked, is very low the temperature. Okay, and these are the default values on this machine. I'm going to overclock it now and show you how I'm doing it in the BIOS on this new MSI board, which I'll review in a separate video. In this BIOS, there's an overclocking section here. I'm going to click on that and then go in and show you the, what I did basically. First things first, the CPU multiplier, okay? That's the CPU frequency, and we're essentially raising that from 33 to 47, okay? You can increase it higher, but then you're going to have to increase the voltage higher. Do you really want to take that chance and burn your CPU? No. So instead of doing that, 4.7 gigahertz gives me tons of performance. The voltage increase that I did is minimal, only 1.355 volts. So it's not about going up to 1.5 volts, which anybody can do. You can always increase the voltage like crazy and get the 5 gigahertz and say, yeah, yeah, I can make my CPU run at 5 gigahertz, but let's see how long it runs at 5 gigahertz before it blows up. So on air, without running proper cooling in your system, and I'm talking about water cooling and sufficient fans, etc., there's no way you're going to have it running at 5 gigahertz, okay? You've got to be efficient and make sure that you keep voltages low, keep it cool, and uh, it'll last a long time, okay? So I had to enable and disable certain features, of course, such as the spread spectrum, I had that disabled, the C1E, I had that disabled, the EIST, I had that disabled as well, and certain options I had enabled. Okay, and here they are, here's the list of things that I did that I enabled and disabled. Of course, some of the values that you might enter will change. This is not something that you can exactly take and put in yours, but you can use this as a guide, as reference to what I got for 4.7 gigahertz stable okay so that way you have something to go by so this board is really good this MSI P67A the GD65 gave me terrific results in my benchmarks that I did here we are now in Windows 7 looking at the CPU Z results with it running of course turbo mode is enabled to get that 4.7 gigahertz temperatures did go up but very little okay you saw earlier when it was not overclocked I had it running at 30 degrees Celsius or slightly below that. Now we went up about 2, 3, 4 degrees. Very little temperature increase based on the huge overclocking performance that I'm getting here from 3.3 to 4.7 gigahertz. And these are the memory timings that, that uh, I'm running on 999 and of course I'm using the uh, AMD 6950 video card which I reviewed not too long ago as well. Now in PC Mark Vantage, you can see the huge results on the CPU score 24,081. That's with it overclocked. If I did not overclock it, you can see the results there. It would have been 17,788. Major boost in performance, small voltage increase, very little heat increase as well, which is what you want to do. It's not about overclocking like crazy, it's about overclocking smart. Remember that, okay? I know that you might have seen other videos and other uh, tutorials out there that people claim they go up to 5.2, 5.5 gigahertz, but then again, they're increasing the voltage all the way to 1.5 or even higher, and that's going to kill the CPU in the long run, okay? Here are great results that I'm getting from Cinebench with it overclocked. Gaming results here on Lost Planet 2, you can see the frames per second on average that I'm getting from all those different scenes that... Uh, that it basically you can play on and uh, you're getting great results I'm telling you you can't go wrong when you overclock smart it's not about overclocking like crazy now um, some other games that I also tried were the Dragon Age 2 I don't know if uh, many of you have tried that game yet Dragon Age 2 got terrific uh, results on that one also uh, I did try Metro 
2033. If uh, you're interested, here again are some benchmarks on that. And of course, if you're also interested on the uh, tessellation, the DirectX 11 benchmarks here from uh, Haven 2.1, here are some benchmarks in the frames per second that I got from that as well. So overall, terrific results. Again, overclocking is not something that's hard to do, but don't try to uh, go crazy and expect to get the same results that other people are getting. Just try to get something that is reasonable, that works, without killing your processor. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.